41. 41. Nearly the answer to life, the universe and everything, but not quite. That's next week. That'll be next time. Next fortnight. Yeah, next time. Not yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. Got plenty of time to wait. Plenty of time to sort out your room fondle from your magic thighs. I say. Steady on. I think that was the names anyway. If that's not their names, I'm then in dead trouble I as to where those ca those came from. <laughs> I do not know Cause it was why something on earth like that. <laughs> they came up with those. If, that's, if, if those aren't the names that were in the book, I'm in dead trouble. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> anyway, so you've got to get them sorted out. Once you've got them sorted out, you can set up your, um, your computer. And your towel. Which is called Deep Thought. And, uh, and your towel, yes, because you need to know where your towel is. And yeah, you can you can find out what the the answer the great answer is. But of course, we already know what the great answer is, and it's next next episode. It's next episode, not this episode, which definitely isn't. Frithcast forty one. Welcome around the virtual campfire. Hello, lovely lovely listeners, Hello. all squidging. We've got some Hello. new bods at the back. Hello, new Hello. bods at the back. Squidgy listeners. You did not just say that. You said they were squidgy. I did. Kind of squidgy. Oh, okay. Hello, listeners who may or may not be squidgy. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I wanted to be accommodating of you know those who squidgy those listeners. who might be and those who might not be, it's... and those who may be squidgy fluid, squidgy neutral, squidgy neutral. <laughs> Non squidgy and squidgy neutral. Those who are a squidgy. Lovely listeners, we've got still some little things to work out here. So while we're kind of working them out, we ought to introduce ourselves. Hello, hail and welcome. Hello. I am Suzanne Martin. I'm a UK ambassador for an organisation called TAC, which is the Asatru community. And I am not. Hooray! Yay! I better do better than that, and possibly. I'm 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 Kate. I'm a, a sort of Roman druidy thing, but Roman pagan druid. What actually am I? We're still working on it, hun. It's, I don't know. It's all good, and you know you can have words, and you can have one or two, or you can have a whole bouquet of words, and a bouquet. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, I live here. I mean, yeah, you live right. here as well. Yes, I Suzanne do. Suzanne lives here as well. I, I do. live. I live I here. Also, also. Uh, not like you know. This is my kitchen. This is, is our our uh, uh, our virtual campfire in the woods. I'm leaving the, that bit in because it's way in, too funny in, to in, cut. In the trees, <laughs> amongst the in amongst the trees in the clearing with the crackling fire and the howling wolves in the distance and uh, owls going 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 like I can't do that thing. I can't do it anyway. That woo thing that you do <laughs> when you're an owl. Those. And there might be some stuff <laughs> rustling around in the undergrowth as well. <clears throat> Doing little critter things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did I mention the roaring fire crackling in the middle? You did. Okay. You did. We'll get the sound effect there. It'll be fine. <clears throat> uh, welcome to Frithcast number 41. Hello. Hello. We thought we'd have a chat this time round. In our usual serious and laconic and definitely, to the point, direct style of presenting. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd have a me chat. Me laconic. What a lovely thought. I can't even spell it. Don't look at me. <laughs> S-P-A-R-T-I-N. Yeah, it does kind of funny, random. This is spelling! Oh, oh okay. Yeah. In the middle of it, and I can't do it. It yeah. goes all horribly wrong at the C's and the... Yeah, no. But that's who they were anyway. Mm. From the the Spartans or the the people of L please forgive my my pronunciation, Lacodaemonia or similar. Being laconic. And they were laconic because of the the beautifully crafted reply they gave. Yes. To a military a military I think it was a guy from Athens, wasn't it? Yeah. The one who were fighting Athens one of the many times they were fighting Athens and the, the the general had them, had the city surrounded, and he sent them a, a message. A message saying, "If you do not surrender your city, we will come in there and and destroy it and kill you all and eat all your marshmallows. Eat, eat all your marshmallows and do all these terrible, bad and, yeah. terrible so things." So you need to surrender. 
And they just sent a one word response back. And it just said, if. Yeah. Which is just. Like that. That's fabulous. Cast iron brass. I can't proper, say it because this is a family show. That's proper. Spheroids. Yes. Spart right there. Good Spartan spheroids. Solid rock. Yeah. Yes. Those. Um, which is where we get our word laconic mm. from. From the Greek. Which is something I have never been. Because no. it means saying very few words. We need a poo. We need a poo. Yes. Was look actually no. I'm thinking he was a short, a bear of very few words, and I think he might have been a bear of very, 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 little, very brain. little brain. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, forget that. What? Not Winnie the Pooh. Not Winnie the. Yeah, no, because I've got Thousand Acre Woods Thermopylae, and it's a very wrong crossover going <laughs> on in my brain right now. It's just a bit random. Okay, we're going to come back on to today's topic now that we've spent some random time. We have a topic. Being very non-laconic. What's we the thought topic? we'd have a chat about a lovely lady who I know is Ira. Okay. And she is Norse goddess of healing. Alrighty. How am I spelling Ira? E I R. Okay. And that's it. I that's know one of them from Guild Wars. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's not the same one, obviously. Yes, no, it isn't. No. Although they do have a whole thing with Garm in Guild Wars, which is quite awesome. Garmin? And Garm. I was going to say they make sat navs. Other sat navs are available. See, I'd mix that up with the loo roll, and I've just got a very odd thing. I'm going to come back to. Oh, the that's now. oh and yeah, the, the, one, the little koala thing. Yeah, the random. Yeah. Yeah. No. Other loo rolls are available. <laughs> I'm just making sure that we don't <laughs> get accused of. We're not being sponsored <clears throat> by like, anybody ever. Like loo rolls and Spartans. Nobody sponsors us. Nobody gives us money for this drivel. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good thing, actually, because then we'd have to produce quality. Oh, <laughs> God help us, no. No, we don't want to do that. So. No, 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 no. We'd have to buy microphones and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. So I thought we'd get back to today's topic, which I'd like to have a look at Era, Lady of Healing. Now, okay. she's a lady in Norse mythology who doesn't have any stories about her on her own. I was going to say, I've not, not, certainly not run into the name. <clears throat> no, she's not mentioned a whole lot. Mm. Um, she's mentioned generally in context of uh, Queen of Asgard, yeah. Frigga and her attendants. She's mentioned in that list of. She's one of the attendants. So some people take her as an attendant. Mm -hmm. Some people take her as an aspect of Frigga yeah. that you can invoke by using that specific aspect oh like an epic like a, a an like epithet a, for a Roman god yes yeah? like an so epithet. it would be like frigga <clears throat> era yes yeah. well like yeah or you can say queen of asgard frigga i call upon era lady of healing okay yeah so some people some heathens and again it's down to personal choice because we, we can't, can't tell, tell you how to heathen, heathen. no no we can't indeed no so again it's personal choice as to whether you view the Handmaids of Frigga, which we've had an episode on before, yeah. as separate to the Queen of Asgard, or as aspects of the Queen of Asgard. Okay. So Ira is one who is named in that list. Mm. But I'd like to have a look today at a very special kind of healing. Now, you can do physical healing. Well, I we can't have, have, I'm not licensed. We have healers and they are called doctors. They are. And surgeons and medics and paramedics and first responders. Mm. People who know how the human body works yeah. and the quirks of the human body and how to, if not fix it when it goes horribly wrong, how to stabilise it when it goes horribly wrong and mm. get it to somebody else who De can fix it. Dequirk it. Dequirk it. I am the kink, actually, no, don't bring <laughs> the kinks out. The kinks are what make it interesting. I am the <laughs> help things be as, as good as they can be yeah. in whatever body you have, whether you like bits of it or you don't like bits of it, it's all good. But basically they make <clears throat> sure it keeps working as opposed to as well as stopping it can working. Do. As well as it can yes. do. And they help. We've just spent like two minutes explaining what a doctor is. <laughs> that was just confusing. I don't know. We, we might be able to cut some of that. It'll be no, fine. It's fine. It's fine. But when it it'll comes to be useful to, to someone. Your, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
when it comes to your mind, for Can't. me, that's as important as your physical self. Okay. We don't have mental health specialists the way we have doctors and specialist surgeons and specialist no. uh, attendants and healers who look at the body. We don't have that degree of specialism for the mind. Hmm. I mean, there are people that deal there are with the mind. counsellors and therapists and psychotherapists. And I suppose a lot of it depends <clears throat> what country you're in. Or, it does. Because you know, um, cultures well, will vary from place to place. For me, the the specialisms, the the weight on the mind isn't as much. No. And for me, we I mean, we did a very short episode way back when on how to keep good mental health. Yes, we did. Or I remember. small things that you can do. One of the things that I find is very good for my mental health is being able to laugh. Yes. At things that are funny, not necessarily things that are vindictive and horrible and nasty, mm. but things that are genuinely funny and being able to share that laughter so we thought lovely listeners we'd tell you some jokes oh god some heathen jokes and some pagan jokes because then you've got a chance to have a bit of a giggle i think it's fair to say that we've nicked these we might have scoured the internet for the finest <laughs> In vintage pagan humour. We typed in pagan jokes and just read out whatever came up. <laughs> Did not. It was diligent research. Diligent. Weeks of... Diligent. Searching with an internet weeks browser. Of, weeks of doing other things. And yeah, then... good point. Going, oh, fudge, we've got an episode to do. <laughs> I would just add, if you are on your commute and you're listening to this through headphones and you're driving, take the headphones off. Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> the law stands with regard to wearing headphones while you drive. doesn't really matter. Carry on. So, doesn't without me, further anything, we thought we'd share with you some of the finest jokes. So, I figure I'm going to start with some heathen ones, and you can just throw in some pagany ones along the way, and cross fingers one of these will make you at least chuckle a little bit. How many Vikings does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. Do I have to do the whole... You can do if you want to. I don't know. How many times I... <laughs> I don't know. How many... Whatever they are. Does it take to change or whatever it is? <laughs> None at all. The light from the burning monasteries works just fine. <laughs> Ooh. Too soon. Yeah, too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Your turn. Um, 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 I'm... I've got Wiccan ones here. That's fine. I can't take the piss because... <clears throat> I'm sorry. I can't do jokes mocking Wiccans because I'm not a Wiccan anymore. There's a Druid one here. Go on then. How many Druids does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. How many Druids does it take to change a light bulb? 501. Okay. One to change the bulb and 500 to align the new stone. <laughs> it's that's internet that's comedy. That's bad. Internet comedy. <laughs> How many heathens does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know how many heathens does it take to screw in a light bulb. Ten. One to hold the boom. One. <laughs> <laughs> One to hold the bulb. And ten to drink until the room starts spinning. Nice. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> Go on. <clears throat> you'll, want to, you'll want to edit this one out. How <clears throat> many druids does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know. They don't screw in light bulbs, they screw in stone circles. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a group of heathens greeting each other? I don't know, what do you call them, <laughs> etc. I don't know. A heel <laughs> <clears throat> For the benefit of listeners without television, the answer to that one was a hailstorm. <laughs> a hailstorm. <laughs> You may now applaud. <laughs> oh, that's uh, bad. Oh, here's a good one. How many druids does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. One to hold the bulb and, tw and 12 to drink enough to make the room spin. <laughs> oh, that sounds familiar. Point off, point uh, off. Point off. How many family traditionalists does it take to change a light bulb? Candlelight was good enough for our ancestors. It's good enough for us. I'm glad, <laughs> it, 
I'm glad you warned them about <laughs> the sheer naked hilarity of this because uh-huh. I'm I'm seeing heathens flying off roads every left, right, and centre here, <laughs> just just losing it at this. How many Gardnerian witches? How many Gardnerian witches does it take to change a light bulb? Answer: Why do you want to know, initiate? Mm. <laughs> should I should I have acted that out a bit better? Would that have that might have brought it to life if I maybe if I put my hood on, <clears throat> turned down the lights in here, dum, dum, dum. and properly intoned it, yeah, then it, then it would be funnier. <laughs> <laughs> How many frost school of wicker witches does it take to change a light bulb? Just you. That's right, you. And for only $195, we'll send you our complete Witch's Power of Light Bulb Changing Magic course. With... That you can okay. apply to any light bulb. <laughs> What's the difference between New Age and Pagan? Is this one out of your head? Yeah. Okay, what's the difference between New Age and Pagan? The decimal point moves one place to the right. <laughs> <laughs> okay... <laughs> Diana Paxson once misquoted the Havamal. Right. Odin so preferred her version that he went back in time and amended the original. <laughs> <clears throat> they used to be four norns until Diana Paxson left to pursue other projects. <laughs> <laughs> How many Scorpios does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. None. They like the dark. As a Scorpio, <laughs> these are bad. And uh, I don't know whether you're supposed to reveal these things about yourself when you're on the internet, but as a Scorpio, mm-hmm. I would like to point out that there is no constellation called Scorpio. Is there not? Nope. Wait, wait. Is this like another joke? Nope. Okay. No, it's a very tedious piece of pedantic information for pedants. Oh, cool. So if you're feeling yeah, pedantic, yeah. this is a piece of Let's information you can use. When somebody's going on about astrology, you can say, well, as a Scorpio, <laughs> if you are, or just say, with reference to Scorpio, there is no zodiac constellation called Scorpio. And when they go, what do you mean? You can, you can go, you can like look smug and go, it's actually called Scorpius. Oh. In the Latin for scorpion. Oh, of course. Scorpius, you see? Yeah, I suppose it is. You see? Where do we get Scorpio from then? Oh. They probably, they probably, it's probably like declined or something. Hang on, what do you do with net? What do you do with verbs? You conjugate verbs, don't you? Yeah. They probably conjugated it, and it's like it means I lost a bit. I scorpion instead, not like I Claudius, but I mean I can, I carry out the act of scorpioning. I scorpion, he scorpion, she scorpions, it scorpions, <laughs> they scorpion, that sort of thing. Because in Latin, I do, I do a thing. Usually, the verb usually ends in o, as in. Amo, I love. Amo, amas, amata, mamos, amatis, mant. All that, you see. Or deco, 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 which is I say, I say, I say, if you want to tell jokes. Which we are doing. Well, in Latin, you start out with (coughs) deco, deco, deco. You see? I say, I say, I say. How many Sagittarians does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. One to install the bulb and a Virgo to pick up the pieces. I don't really understand that one at all. <laughs> Maybe I should read up on astrology. Maybe it would make more sense then. <laughs> How many Odinists does it take to change a light bulb? 21. One to hold the light bulb, 20 to drink until the world spins. I'm sensing a theme here. We've got a bit of a theme going we on, have. it has to be said. Okay. A witch practices on the beach. Is she a sandwich? Oh dear. That, oh. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's a good one. <clears throat> what do you say to a really, really angry witch? I don't know. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting fact, Ed. Mm-hmm. Did you know that frogs that go ribbit mm. are actually speaking with a Hollywood accent? Yes. Yeah? Because they don't do it. It's like pirates going, argh. Arr. Yeah. Only one guy. Trace it down to one film and one guy. Yeah, one guy, and I can't remember who it was, <laughs> but it wasn't probably Errol Flynn. No, it was some guy okay. that they had playing Long John Silver in a, an early film adaptation of Treasure, Treasure Island. Treasure Island. And he was, I don't know whether he was from the West Country or for some reason he just decided to speak with a West, West Country 
accent. So all this very sort of almost rural farmer sounding yar yar stuff. Apologies to anybody from the West Country. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't mean to generalise, but the, 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 we all think of pirates as doing this <coughs> ha-ha thing. Yes, it's all from him. All because of him. Yeah, very strange. And also the, the frogs. Yes. Only go ribbit at Hollywood. Hollywood. So that's what all the frogs in the films do. They go ribbit because that's what frogs in Hollywood do. Maybe it's a Hollywood frog with a really angry rib. Maybe it is. Yeah. Maybe a Sam Frog. On that with, Sam frog with the frog Phyllis. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Deep philosophical point. Were you going to tell us about Era at all? Or <laughs> <laughs> was it just an excuse to do crap jokes? I like the crap jokes. I like the crap jokes as well. But the... They give me ten minutes of humour and I feel <clears throat> a little bit better. What happens <clears throat> when a ceremonial magician gets angry? I don't know. He goes Kabbalistic. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Okay. It's the history of medicine. It goes... 2000 BCE. Here, eat this root. 1000 CE. That root is heathen. Here, say this prayer. 1850. That prayer is superstition. Here, drink this potion. 1940. That potion is snake oil. Here, swallow this pill. 1985. That pill is ineffective. Here, take this antibiotic. 2000. That antibiotic doesn't work anymore. Here, eat this root. <laughs> oh dear. While Kat's trying to find the last joke for today. I want to find... I know, I actually know the one I want to find. <clears throat> okay. While Kat is trying to locate the last joke for today, for today's episode, what are your favourite pagan jokes, heathen jokes? Share a little bit of... That lovely humour that I know heathens have. Try a little tenderness. No, don't do that. No? Oh, no. OK. It was... Um, uh, I, I was just thinking it might be a good idea on account of um, Donkey. Spoke very highly of the idea. <laughs> I can't find... I, I can't find the, the, the exact joke, but it's one about... Um, it, it's the sort of stereotype snarky Brit. Mm. Uh, a British Airway, Airways pilot... Uh, a British airline, a British Airways airliner lands, and there's some bit of a snooty air traffic controller, and is picking fault with everything everybody okay. does. It is alleged that this Speedbird, this British Airways flight, came in, landed, rolled down the runway, and the tower, the the, the tower controller shouted up and said, "Speedbird, whatever, clear the runway at the next taxiway or whatever." Oh, and by the way, you're uh, you were slightly to the left of the centre line on that approach on that landing. Mm. And this British Airways pilot comes back and says, that's correct, and my co-pilot was slightly to the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I've always liked that one. That's a good one. <sighs> OK. Well, lovely listeners, we've come to the end of today's episode. We've hoped you've had a bit of a giggle and had a bit of a laugh at some of the heathen humour that we've managed to find we'll, for you. We'll do serious again next time. We'll do see. Well, we'll do our usual vein of serious, which is kind of serious-ish oh, no. next time. Oh, no. No? Oh, no. no. I expect serious next time. Really? Well, after all this merriment and levity, I expect serious. I want, I want absolute stone faces all the way through and not a hint of a titter. <laughs> be very dry and educational <laughs> next time. I will not. <laughs> We're just going to read the Havamal to you from beginning to end. In very serious voices. In fact, I'm not sure the Havamal's a serious enough book. We might have to read Meditations. Give you some, give you some Roman Stoicism. We'll read Meditations at you. Might have to do it in installments, though. Oh, God. All right, book us in the next 17 episodes. <laughs> you lot are going to cop some Marcus Aurelius <laughs> and you'll be grateful. <laughs> well, on that note, lovely listeners, <laughs> I'm going to try and dissuade. Maybe we can get it into like 16 and a half if we just squash it a, a bit. <laughs> squash, squash stoicism, it'll be fine. That's the nice thing about Stoics, you can squash them and they don't object. 
We're back to the squishy ones again, aren't we? We're, they just we started there squidgy, at the beginning. Squidgy, <laughs> squidgy, oh, that squidgy was, Stoics. That was squidgy heathens. This is squidgy Stoics. I mean, you can get Stoic heathens, I suppose. Okay. The nice thing is they don't complain. They just go, oh, well, this is the, this is the natural order of nature. And leave it's it squid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Lovely listeners, we're going to leave it there for today. If you would like to find us online, I'm Suzanne Martin. You can find me on Facebook under Suzanne Martin, or you can find me on Twitter at Suzanne Tack, which is T A C. Indeed. And if you want to find me, you don't, but let, just just humour me for a minute. We have been doing all episode. <laughs> this is true. If you want to find me, I do have a Facebook, I do have a Twitter, I don't use them very much, if I'm quite honest. But if you want to drop me a, a, a note on my website, it's at glassrain.net. And sometimes, sometimes, when the moon is full and there's a certain frisson of something in the air, Sometimes I update it. In a dark, dark town, on a dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark house with a dark, dark door. I'm getting a theme of dark, dark here. Yes. I'm going to go recite you the rest of that poem. Lovely listeners. And then I'm going to do the one about ducks. Thank you very much for joining us. We will talk to you all next time. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>